Hello, my inky friends. It's Cindy Lynn with My Inky Fingers. Thank you so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel and blog. Today, I want to showcase the Stampin' Up! Birds and Branches bundle. When I got this set, I was super excited because I saw these little birds and I decided right then and there that I wanted to make them look as realistic as, well, as realistic as my coloring and artistry will allow. I'm not an artist or anything, but I figured if I could look at some pictures on Google, I could probably make this look as realistic as, again, my artistry would allow. So today I'm gonna to show you in detail how I did that, and then I'm gonna show you how I made the card. So of course I have my birds and branches out, and I have those top two birds. Those are the overlay. There is a underlay for those, it's a two-step stamping. So the bottom one you stamp in a color, and the top one you stamp in another color. But I wanted to go realistic. And I saw that little chickadee there on Google and I thought, oh my gosh, she is so cute. I don't know if these are chickadees, but that's what I Googled and they kind of looked like chickadees. So I'm going with chickadees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two Stampin' Right markers and I'm going to use the basic black and the crumb cake because I want the belly to be crumb cake because I want it to be beige and then I want the rest of the bird to be black. But I don't want to color all of the bird in solid, so I'm just going to use my black Stampin' Right marker, and I'm going to feather kind of where the wings are. So I'm going to huff on it just so that I've got nice moist ink to make my impression, and that's kind of what it turns out like. So there's a lot of white space around the black, and that'll allow me to bring in some color and help make it look a little more realistic. So I've got my Sakura clear gel pen out because I wanted to preserve the eyes and make them a little glossy because of course they're going to be a little glossy on a real bird, right? So I'm going to start with my black Stampin' Right marker and I'm just going to feather in some of the lines to define the wings and I'm going to color the tails in solid. So I'm trying to preserve some of that white space in the wings so that I can bring in some blue and add a little bit of texture and dimension. So I'm just feathering that marker with a light touch and just kind of doing a flicking motion and bringing in some black. Now hindsight I may have tried to color the beak a little bit different of a color when I'm coloring it in here with the blue. Now I did use the Stampin' um, Stampin' Blends and I used light and dark balmy blue here and I just wanted to do some blending. But again, hindsight, I wish that I had of maybe done the beak in the... Um, the crumb cake but you know what it all worked out and had I not have mentioned it you may not even noticed it but and I think as per the picture a lot of birds have black beaks so I'm not going to stress out too much about it but it is an option if you wanted to kind of add a little bit more dimension in the beak so I'm going to use the light and dark crumb cake for the belly and I want it a little bit darker up at the the breast underneath the neck and then underneath the, the back part of the body of the bird. So I'm just going back with the light and dark and blending it all out. And you see here in the picture, I think this is what threw me off, is the bird had a blue beak and I didn't really notice it right away when I was coloring the black and the um, crumb cake on the actual stamp. So hindsight, if you wanted to do the bird's beak a little bit blue, it would just add a little bit more dimension. So now that I've got all my colors blended, as you can see in the picture, there is kind of like those black lines on the wing. Now that bird had some white and I decided to not go with white because my artistic abilities, my brain couldn't comprehend how I was going to bring white into this. So I just went with the blue and the beige. But I want to use the black Stampin' Right marker and my 05 Sakura gel pen to bring in those white lines because the gel pen really, really keeps the opacity and it's very, very, very opaque. So it shows those white lines. So I'm just bringing in that marker and I'm just doing that flicking kind of feathering. Now, because the ink is wet, sometimes the ball in your Jelly Roll pen will stick. Just draw on a scratch piece of paper, get that ball rolling again and you're good to go. So for the, um, nest <laughs> mental block for the nest what is intended is you take a light colored cardstock like a crumb cake and a dark colored ink and you stamp it on top but I did that on the white and then I took it all off and went oh I want to blend on here to add dimension so I flipped it upside down and started again so the first color I went in with was the crumb cake and then I went in with the early espresso 
and I just kind of blend it around the outside. So as you can see, it added some dimension. Now I'm going in with my early espresso Stampin' Rate marker, and I'm just kind of darkening up those those little twigs that the nest is made of. And then again, back with the um, light and dark crumb cake, and I'm going to just color in the inside because technically you wouldn't really see through the nest, right? And if it was stamped on crumb cake cardstock, you would naturally get that background. So I'm just faking the background by coloring it in with my stamp and write markers. So I'm going to use a bunch of different markers and just do some flicking and adding of the branches. So here I'm coming in with soft suede and just adding a little bit more dimension to those branches. And again, I wanted to kind of have the nest look a little bit more realistic because I, I put in all the effort with the birds. So I didn't want a flat nest. I wanted some dimension in there. So just the soft suede crumb cake and the early espresso stamp and write markers just adding in some of those extra twigs giving it a little bit more dimension and then coloring and blending it in with the light and dark crumb cake now I did bring out the gold stampin blends marker but and you could see I put it on the scratch paper there and it just wasn't the right hue so I just stuck with the colors that that I listed now I will list all of the supplies down below so you'll be able to refer back to that and they'll be on my YouTube channel in the description and on my blog. So once I've got the nest done, I'm going to pull out my dies. Now I'm going to cut this just so that I can kind of cut everything all in one pass because each of the birds has its own die, right? So now I've gotten ahead of myself. I guess I'm going to go, I'm going to go do my branch first. Um, I'm just kind of trimming this a little bit because I'm, I'm planning out where I want everything to sit. And I know that I want the branch to, or the, the nest to sit on the branch. Now, these little feet, it's so adorable that they added these little feet in here. And I'm going to stamp them way too many times because um, I didn't get a great impression the first time. And I had to decide which feet I wanted, like, because one goes one way and one goes the other way. So I stamped them a few times so I could cut them out and then decide which one I want to go with. Now, these little feet, I'm looking at it going, how am I going to get the perfect amount of white space around here because there's a lot of metal on that die and you can't see through it 100% perfectly but I'm going to show you how I combated that. Now the other day I did a uh, Forever Fern card and I did stamp up some extra ferns so I pulled that out from my other card and the dies because I want to use more realistic looking now, someone told me on that, on that video to say full and age really, really fast, foliage. So I wanted realistic looking foliage, foliage. I can't say that word. Anyhow, so as you can see here, what I did is I used the die and I cut out those feet and then I put the stencil of the cutout over top of the stamped feet and then taped it and then put the die in it and then ran that whole thing through my big shot so you'll be able to see exactly where your template is and then just your die fits right in there like a little puzzle it sits perfectly and then you can cut it right out so now I'm just kind of laying everything out here and deciding what I want on here and where I want to place everything so I'm going to use both branches and pull all of that off. And now I'm gonna kind of leave them on that paper where I want it and put my magnet down because then my door will pick up my stamps, right? I'm also gonna make sure that I put that laminated uh, grid paper behind this because as you can see, one of my stamps goes off my cardstock. So I want that laminated sheet to pick up that extra ink so I can easily wipe it away. Now here, you know, I thought I'm going to blend on these. You know me, am I blending on stamps? So I went in with the crumb cake and then brought in the early espresso and I stamped it. And I was not super pleased because I just didn't like the way it looked. So then I just brought in my stamp and write markers. So I'm just coloring them up just to add a little bit more dimension. Now for this or stamp and write, my stamp and blends, I brought in my stamp and blends. So the same two colors as before, the light and dark crumb cake. So I'm just going to kind of trace along, color along those branch branches because again, I'm trying to stay in tune with this realistic theme. So I wanted to color those up and make sure that they had a nice good solid looking branch and then 
that there is the soft suede Stampin' Rate marker and I'm just using this to add a little bit more shading. So this I had intended to be the actual background for my card, you know, my mat that we're going to stick on the A2 size card. And as I'm coloring this, I knew I wanted to use the old world um, embossing folder. And I'm thinking, when I emboss this, it's going to make those branches look all crooked and whatnot. I'm just kind of thinking, oh, well, what am I going to do here? And I'm looking and there's no dye to cut this out. So see there, I'm thinking all these crevices are really going to alter how those, those branches look. So... I ended up fussy cutting them out and I, you know, I hate fussy cutting. See, there's no dyes for, for the branches. So, and then I literally pulled that one out thinking, is this somehow going to work? Nope, that wasn't somehow going to work. So, you know what? I pulled out my trusty snips and I just snipped this up, fussy cut it the best I could. And then I went with a completely another piece of background to emboss for the old world background. So that way I could just put those branches right on top I could just adhere them down so I've got those all fussy cut out now what I had thought too my mind was going everywhere on this card I wet this before I embossed it because I wanted to distress the corners and I thought and that's the only reason I did this I thought if the paper was moist I'd be able to kind of really distress these corners and I wanted to use the bone folder and my pick and I'm coming in close here so you can see you can actually separate the paper so that's kind of what I was going for and I thought if it was moist I could do that you skip that step and just wet your corners with a little bit of spritzer as you go because it dries so fast this is i use the um uh, just the the regular stampin up whisper white here but it absorbs so so quick so as you can see i brought out my stamparatus and i just sprayed it on there and kind of tried to sop up the the water just so i could get those corners um, a little bit more distressed so i've got down my branches where i want them now i'm just snipping up those those little pieces of foliage foliage <laughs> so that I can have those kind of peeking out behind the um, nest now everything you see up to here is adhered flat down there's no dimension the only dimension on this card is going to be the nest so I'm just using my block because there's a lot of crevices and bumps on that background and I want to make sure that you know I get a good a good glue down right so I'm just laying all those down and I'm putting a fair amount of glue because I want to again make sure that it gets in all those little crevices and then for the nest that's that's the piece that I ended up putting the dimensionals on now I'm thinking here about my sentiment where I wanted to put it and I decided oh I want to put my sentiment right in the center of my nest so I used my trusty undo I took all those dimensionals off put them back on the backing paper and once it's dry they're totally sticky again so I wasn't I didn't ruin them taking them off now because I wanted the sentiment on here I thought I'm going to emboss this but I stamped it in black first on my grid paper just so that I knew I got a perfect impression because I couldn't have have this sentiment not be straight and centered because that would drive my OCD nuts so the way I put my stamp was perfect I don't have to worry about it I'm going to use my little de-statification tool to de my cardstock and then my Versamark and I'm going to stamp that and I'm, I think I'm going to do it two times just because the magnet was kind of close to the beginning of the sentiment so it didn't get a good impression and then I heat set that with white until it was smooth and melted. I put those same dimensionals back on there. And the congratulations where I'm going with this card is um, a really dear friend of mine is getting, they're moving in July. So this is kind of a congratulations on your new home. So I'm going to use the on your new home sentiment for the inside. And I just thought the birds and the nest and it was so suiting because there goes my alarm sorry anyway I thought it was really suiting because the birds are nesting and it's their home and when you get a new home you always nest you know what I mean so I thought it was super super cute anyhow I used the 2019 2020 
in color faceted dots for the blue there just to add a little bit of dimension and then on the inside I just you know I didn't go too fussy with this branch I just used the early espresso stamped it one time stamped the on your new home and then stamped those little flowers or whatever you want to call them I was going to use the eggs and then I was like nah I'm not going to use the eggs but I did bring in the um I believe it was the light balmy blue that marker looks like the light I know it was one of the two it was the light or the dark just to add a little bit of dimension stamp that little heart on there just to give it something something and then I went with these little sprigs out of the butterfly beauty just because I didn't want too too much there but I wanted something and the white I thought kind of accented it really really nicely it just filled in that spot so there's your inside and your outside hopefully you'll be recreating this and creating more realistic looking birds too and until i see you again take care and happy stamping <laughs>